Oh man. Oh, I thought I was on the wrong account. <laughs> I hit go live and then I thought I was on another account and I was like, shoot, <laughs> we're good. We're on the right account. Hello, Giselle. I was at the dentist today and the assistant that was helping, her name was Giselle. And I was like, oh, hey. <laughs> Made me think of you while I was there. I know. It was kind of funny. She was really sweet. Always nice to have something to make me less nervous at the dentist. That is like my least favorite place to go. It's so weird. Growing up, I was the only Giselle. I know um, I have a friend that her little girl, well, she's not little anymore. She's like 13, but her name is Giselle. Now the name has become popular and it trips me out. <laughs> well, this lady was older i would guess she was mid to late 30s i mean you know she's not like 20 or something i say older meaning she wasn't a teenager but anyways um but yeah those are the only two i know and you so all right me too i'm glad she I'm older, LOL. I think I'm older, like I'm 35. So I'm like, I'm not, I don't know. I feel like once you hit like mid thirties, you're older. You're not old, but older until you're like 55. And then you're like working on being old. <laughs> Anyways. Okay. So we are going to do um, turkey work today. Turkey work is fun. It's also a lot. Um, so I am only going to do turkey work on his hat. Um, but if you are loving turkey work, it would be really fun to do Santa's beard with the turkey work as well. Um, I don't love turkey work enough to do his whole beard like that. So I'm going to do, when we do French knots, I'm going to do his beard as French knots. Um, so I'm going to leave that up to you with what you want to do. So we're just going to work with the DMC Blanc today um, and go from there. So we're going to use all six strands because we, when you're doing turkey work, you want to have that nice and full. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, so with turkey work, we don't do a knot at the end of our thread. So um, that's the end. And let's zoom in just a little bit. And I'm sorry if my words are a little bit funny. My mouth is still numb. Okay, so with turkey work, we actually start from the front. So we're going to start on the end. Hi, Haley. And we're going to leave about a half an inch tail, okay? And then we're going to go up right next to it. And then go down just on the other side. So this is creating like an anchor or a locking stitch or whatever you want to call it that holds that, that stitch in place. And then that's what we're going to do this whole time. So we're going to come back up where we went down first. So right in the middle there, right next to that, or right in the same hole. Um, and we're going to keep a loop. And we're going to go about this same size stitch from here to here, except we're going to go here to here. 
and we're gonna go down and we're gonna keep that loop. So we wanna keep our loops approximately the same length. And then we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna come over here where we went down in our locking stitch and we're gonna come up and then go down on the other side to lock it in. Not doing Santa, but interested in this stitch, but I have a patient in nine minutes. So you're gonna have to come back and finish watching then. We will not finish in nine minutes, but. And then that's our next stitch. So we're gonna just keep doing that all the way across. So we're gonna come up. And down. And keep that loop. and then lock it into place. This is a fun stitch, but it's... So, um, Haley, if you want to use this stitch, you could use it um, on your mittens on the winter one, or you could use it like on the heart mug just to like give it some texture um, if you wanted to. So you can use it if you want. I'm not gonna teach it again but you could change up your mittens and use it or something. My stitches are getting a little bit big. You wanna keep your stitches fairly small so you have plenty of space filled. Um, Cause you want these to be pretty dense so that it fills when we cut these it'll fill that space and make it fluffy. So just pay attention to that part of it. Hello, hello. See, those are a little bit big. That's okay because we're gonna do some more rows just like this. So we're gonna finish with a locking stitch. Okay, so there's row one. So row two, we're gonna try and do it opposite. So we're gonna come, we're gonna come up in these spots and then we're gonna lock from here to here. So kind of like how bricks lay is how we want to do this. So then we have um, so it'll fill our gaps. Okay. So that's our loop. And then we're going to lock it from this one to this one. So if you make these a little bit, um, like if you make these rows a little further apart, then it'll just have less, it'll be not filled quite as much. So it's totally up to you. Like if this is feeling overwhelming, you can do them a little bit further apart. Um, Cause I think we're gonna do one more row on the bottom and then we're gonna do some on top as well. But the more you put in there, the fluffier. Let's see, that's a locking stitch, sorry. I had to pay attention. Um, but the closer these are, the more like fluffy your th thread will be. Now that I'm thinking about it, let's see. 
Um, we probably should have just started at the top right along the red, but too late now. We'll just have to move these out of the way. grab a tissue really quick because I keep needing to sniffle and that is annoying on a camera. Hold on one second. Okay. So I'm going to do one more row below these. So I'm going to start over here on the end. So if this makes you very nervous or if you do it and decide you don't like it, um, you can always fill this with French knots as well. But I'm going to challenge you to try it because you may do it and find that you love it. I think that the texture turns out really, really fun. Like I love when it is done, but I don't love... The process, whoops, I pulled some red out. The process does not make me super happy. Okay, anchor that. Okay, and we're gonna come up here and do Maybe just one row, maybe two. Let's see how it goes. So if you're doing this not with me, maybe start, <laughs> start at the red and then work your way down. because now I'm holding down stuff on top and on bottom, which is fine, like it's doable, but, whoop, pulled that too much. Gosh, I keep pulling those. You make it look easy. I feel like mine always end up very chaotic. Um, I feel like mine are chaotic. <laughs> so that's funny that you say that. Because I feel like mine are. Like I watch other people do it and I'm like, how do you do that so nicely? 
So maybe that's just how it goes. It just feels a little crazy. Like I feel like I need to put in a few in the middle. I'm gonna do one more. See, like, especially because I started in the middle. That was a bad idea. Then I've just got stuff everywhere. Okay. Can't decide. I think that'll be okay. These ones are so close. Okay, so I'm going to leave that. Okay, so I'm going to tie it off and back. And then we will... Make sure you tie it off before you do anything else. Because the next thing we're going to do is cut these threads, friends. Okay. So now we have all these loops. So what we're going to do is go in and cut the loops. I like to kind of do them like one or two at a time. Maybe not right here, I've got a lot going on there. Okay, so all those loops are cut and now we just have this like crazy fringe. So I'm gonna warn you right now, always trim long, you can always cut more off, okay? So what we're gonna do next is trim some of this hair. Um, so that we can just make this fluffy. So I'm gonna cut, just so that they're all like even, I'm gonna cut like this much and go from there. So this is messy. Oh no, that's gonna be still way too long. So I'm gonna trim again, but always cut less in the beginning because you can always cut more, but once you cut it, it's gone. Okay, still, that's still pretty long. So I'm gonna trim it again. These ones on the end are... <sighs> if you have one of those like lint rollers, now is a good time to get it out. Okay, so I'm just gonna go through and trim. There's some of these that are just longer than the rest, so I'm just gonna trim those real quick. And then we'll fluff it. Okay, and then we can trim it more if we want to. But I think that's a pretty decent length. Okay, so I just like to go in with my needle and just like rub it back and forth. So I'm using the eye, the eye end. I don't wanna get my needle in there. And just rub those to get them fluffy. Hey, Lee, you're still here. I was faster than I thought, I guess. Or your patient is late. So you could also get like a little eyebrow brush or I know some people have like special brushes that they use. I don't know. I feel like this works just fine for me, but it takes a minute because you're just, you're wanting to separate all of those strands and like make them fluffy. So it just takes a minute to, my patient isn't here. <laughs> well, hang out a little longer then. Okay, so once it starts to get fluffy, you can kind of see like, like these ones are still really long. So I'm gonna go in and trim those just a little bit at a time till this sits how I want it to. So you can trim these pretty short and they'll be fine, um, but kind of shape it how you want it. 
Um, I tend to do like the edges a little bit shorter and then the middle, like the edges I do a little shorter and then I leave the middle a little bit longer just because it's fun to kind of have that bulk. But just like move it around, get it to where you want it. Trim this slow. Look how cute. Okay, this one's long. Looks so good, thanks. See, it's fun. I just, I get really impatient when I have to do all those stitches. And every once in a while, take a step back so you can look at the whole picture instead of like the close up because you don't want to trim too much. But I think that's good. Oh, I've got one right here like that's in his eyeball. Okay, that's it. So I'm just gonna do, um, because I may as well do it on camera while we're at it, but I'm just gonna do the same thing for the little puff ball. Um, but do you see, it would just take a long time to do that beard, like that's just a lot of beard. And I just don't, I don't love the process, so I don't wanna do that for his beard. But that would make a really, really cute beard if you like this or if you want to practice it. Um, it's totally an option. You could add some of the white atole thread and give him like, if his hat has some sparkle, then his fringe can have some sparkle. Um, just put it in your needle with, and I used all six strands. I think I said that, but in case I didn't. Um, but you just want all of it in your needle at the same time. But a little sparkle in there might be really fun. I hope someone does the beard so I can see it. <laughs> I imagine somebody would because I know some people just really, really love turkey work. So I hope somebody will, but I guess we'll find out. Okay, so when I do a circle, I start on the edge and I work my way in. And then my loops are all like out. Oh, dang it. I did the mistake of a knot I got in my habit. Silly me, we start at the front. Okay. We're gonna anchor that. What is going on down here? I think I have a knot, hang on. Oh yeah, big old knot. Sorry, third time's a charm. Actually, if you're doing both of these, you could do them at the same time so you're like not creating a big mess everywhere you go. And then these will stay out of your way from his hat. And then we're just gonna go down on that curve and keep all of our loops on the outside of the circle. is starting to 
be un numb and it's starting to itch. Does your face itch when the numbing from dental work starts to wear off? <laughs> I feel like mine does every time. Oh man, what did I do here? Giselle, yes. Okay, see? Not crazy. And the dental, the dentist makes me so nervous, so I didn't eat this morning. I had to be there at 8, which is super early for me to be anywhere. So I didn't eat breakfast, and now I'm, like, so hungry. See, this is a little bit in the way. So this one is a little bit funky because you've just got stuff like all these stitches. Oh, my face is starting to itch. <laughs> just stop to scratch. Okay, so I'm just going to anchor this one. Sorry, these strands are just all over the place. Pulling loops in everywhere I go. Okay. So we have our outside edge, and then we're going to do that again. And try and go and have your loops in different spots, which I know is kind of hard when it's a circle and it's a like it's a fairly small circle. So I'm gonna try and just we just want to create enough loops that we can fill that space. Hold on, my tail is not wanting to come. There we go. I don't feel like circles need to be quite an exact science. Like, I'm just going to start putting in some stitches. As long as you make a loop and anchor it, you'll be fine. So I'm gonna get that one down. I think maybe one or two more here in the middle. Make sure you know which one you're anchoring. Let's see, I'm just gonna do one more and try and keep it like really in the center. Last one. 
Oh, there's a lot of threads right there. Okay. Tie that off. Oh, shoot. I've got a knot back there. Look at this little knot guy. If I have knots like that, because it's a slip knot, so I usually go through it when I tie it off so that I, I'm not worried about it pulling through to the front. Okay. Let's cut some threads. all of them. Oh no, one more. So I kind of know how long I want it because of I already did this part. I'm still cutting a little bit more slowly just to be sure. All right. And then you have a little mess of snow all over your table. So the more you like rough these up, the fuzzier they're gonna get. Cause it'll just separate those strands. See like these ones aren't separating right here. Sometimes I'll just go in with my needle, like if I have a stubborn one or two, then I'll just go in and like pull them apart. There we go. Help them get fuzzy. Now just be careful, like if I'm going this way, then I'm like catching the edge of his hat. So I'm trying to go in a direction that's not going to catch any other threads around it. All right, let's do some trimming. Just a minute. I said when Roman gets home, honey. Ugh. I'm still doing my class. I'll talk to you in a little bit. Roman will be home in half an hour. <laughs> I'm gonna try and keep that round. Well, we can see it's like the end of his hat. Okay. Mom? Gemma, I am in the middle of my class and I will speak to you when I am done. Thank you. Go. Okay. Anyways. You could trim this forever, but eventually you need to stop. <laughs> so I'm going to stop before I keep trimming too much. 
So I made the ball just slightly shorter so that it sits a little bit lower so that it, you can differentiate it from the band across the front. Um, but there he is. There's our cute Santa. Let me zoom out just a little bit. So whoever does the beard is the hero, and we want to see, because the rest of us might be doing French knots. <laughs> Unless you really loved this, a beard would be so cute like this. So if you're feeling it, please feel free to share it with the group. Um, okay, so like last week, I'll post um, what we're planning on doing on what days. Um, we've got the bulbs and the train on here, and then we've got the mittens and the cocoa on the winter one, and then we'll do, um, next Friday, we'll do French knots for all the little detailed stuff. So, anyways, have a good weekend. I hope you get to do all the fun things. Um, we are gonna relax, I think. We're tired around here. But, anyways, in a minute, honey. Okay, I will see you on Monday and let me see your progress on this turkey work. Let me know. Love it or hate it. Let me know. I'll do a, I think I might do a post tomorrow in my stories and we can decide who loves it and who hates it. Could be fun. So anyways, see you Monday. Have a good weekend.